Dooley Noted, 326, 2017. Hi, I'm Dr. Kathy Dooley. I'm here at NKT Level 2 NYC in the amazing Catalyst Sport with one of my great friends and a freaking genius. She's on the teaching team here. Do you want to introduce yourself to the camera? Hi, I'm Beth Bergman. Um, I am a personal trainer in New York City and NKT Level 2 certified. Yes, and she's allowed us to show you a little bit today about uh, AC <clears throat> joint decompression and how the subclavius muscle can actually downregulate upper trap function. So hers is very subtle, but she has a couple of signs. Now, Beth, you were telling me earlier you have a history of scoliosis. Mm -hmm. It's a legal scoliosis on the left side, affecting mm -hmm. the right shoulder girdle. Mm -hmm. And so you have a little bit of right shoulder dysfunction. Mm -hmm. You're working on the, the lumbar um, issue, but you also want some shoulder function back. Yes, please. And you had some neuropathy into your hands. Yes. Yeah, so you point to three particular digits, three, four, and five. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's really significant because if it's digits three, four, and five, it is pec or neck, if not both. Right? We did some neck testing on you earlier and we didn't find much. We found something really, really significant right here. As you can see from Beth, we'll look straight on here, she has this stretched out kind of appearance. And you can see from her neck, a lot of people would go to the neck for that and maybe treat lateral flexion to lateral flexion. When we tested Beth, it didn't really give us a lot of, of results. In fact, if you look at her lateral flexion, uh, ear to shoulder, good, and ear to shoulder here, it's not super different from side to side. It's really the, the illusion of that happening because the shoulder girdle itself is dropped. The clavicle articulates with the acromion process of the scapula. So this AC joint, acromioclavicular joint, can be decompressed if there is upper trap inhibition. If it's not able to maintain its motor control to hold the arm upward into upward rotation. Sometimes it's down regulated by a structure that's actually pulling the clavicle down and that's subclavius. Subclavius is a muscle that runs on the underneath of the clavicle here, and in some cases can actually attach to the coracoid process. So this can yank not only the clavicle, but even the scapula downwards towards the first rib, allowing for this issue of coracopectoral tunnel syndrome or even costoclavicular syndrome. So that gives us the, the full hand numbness. In her case, it's digits three, four, and five. That means it's not ulnar, it's not median, it's both. And the only two places you can compress both are going to be pec or neck. So for her, the neck was cleared, so now we're going to focus on the pectoral region. Now, she has a very, very subtle uh, difference in her reverse apples. In the reverse apples, you reach overhead, which is flexion with abduction and external rotation. So we checked her ability to abduct and it was fine, but when she upwardly rotated, we saw a little bit of a glitch on the reverse apples. So do you mind if we show that to the camera? So I'll step out of the way so you can see. And focus your eyes right here, and you'll see some dyskinesia. You'll see some jumping around. So go ahead and look here. And you can see that clunkiness of the scapula. Now, Beth, do you mind showing the opposite side separately? Nice and clean mo movement. There was no clunking around. Now that you've seen clean, go back and look at the possible dyskinesia here. And now it's really visible. Now that you've seen the clean, it's really, really super visible to see the unclean. So we're assuming that she may have a possibility of an AC joint decompression. That's that stretched out looking appearance that's also matched with paresthesia of the hand. So Beth, um, we found earlier with our NKT skills that you actually had this muscle inhibiting the upper trap. So you're one of the rare cases where we actually want to release subclavius, but teach you how to elevate. Oh my gosh, we actually want to teach the upper trap to hype. That's okay. It's absolutely okay. And in fact, in Beth, she can't really do that well because subclavius is yanking the clavicle and scapula down. So in order to show that release, we'll have you walk over here and actually lay flat on your back. Uh, actually, this way is great. Yeah. And I'm gonna have you push yourself completely off the table with the scapula. I'm gonna block you with my hips so that you don't fall off, okay? So subclavius's job is to pull the clavicle and scapula, if it's attached to the coracoid, uh, down towards the first rib. So that would be matched uh, with very much with her inhalation, right? The rib coming up and the clavicle coming towards it. So we're gonna add an exhalation at the end range to get a full stretch of subclavius, but um, we actually want you to come in pretty close. I want you to actually see right here, yeah. We're actually gonna move the clavicle upwards and we're gonna encourage her scapula to also move upwards. That's going to do a healthy compression of the AC joint and it's also gonna take pressure off the brachial plexus. For people that have a separated AC joint, this is a wonderful corrective set. Okay, so I'm gonna have you just grab me by the neck 
I'll have you just relax the shoulder girdle to start, okay? Now, you're grabbing by the neck for two reasons, okay? I want to just involve the humerus and the scapula, and if something hurts, you put me in a chokehold, okay? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put my thumb right here at subclavius. To find subclavius, what you're going to look for is under the clavicle where there is no pec major, and that's going to be the distal third of the clavicle. So the distal third, we don't have pec major under the clavicle. So you find this little delta pectoral triangle, and you have a nice little right spot right there, a high tone spot. So I'm gonna put my thumb and I'm gonna push upwards, straight towards her ear to elevate the clavicle and help her compress that AC joint. I'm gonna meet her where she's at in decompression. I'm gonna take her where she's not. So I'm gonna pull her humerus down to help guide me. But my real focus is gonna be upward pushing of my thumb. And then I'm gonna cue Beth to push right into my hand at the acromion. You can see what that does to her upper trap. It actually activates it. And then bring it back down. So she's doing healthy joint compression. Good. People that get this problem are usually people that have like sometimes on the heavy carry when they're carrying a kettlebell or a bag that's too heavy, it drags their shoulder down and they get neuropathy into their hand. Good. Excellent. And then we'll have you roll to stand up. Good. And then when you come over to stand, you can face the camera. And what we want to do is we want to try to encourage you to upwardly rotate while pushing the clavicle upwards. So I want her to actually push this acromion up. Good. Good. And then relax it down. Good. And push up. Good job, and back down. Excellent. And as she stands in front of you now, uh, do a spin turn for us. Good. You can already see the symmetry is improved, right? It's not perfect, but it's definitely a start. And then as she stands there and she does the reverse athletes again, you'll see the dyskinesia is much better. Awesome, Beth. You can see that skip and jump went away. And then let's go to the left side. Much better. Wonderful. And now let's measure that against the side that we saw the issue on. Much better, Beth. Awesome. So she's got a tattoo, which is really cool because we can actually see the tattoo move, <laughs> which is extremely helpful to us. Um, but you can actually um, really improve someone's scapular kinetics, even though you can clearly see that she has a levoscoliosis that she's clearly working on, but you worked so hard on this and it actually has reduced since I've known you. So what a, what a, a juggernaut you are, that's awesome. Um, so she can also, while she's stabilizing her, her lumbar spine, she can work on these scapular mechanics and even combine them with integration to make sure she improves the function of both. Meanwhile, helping you with the paresthesia in the hand, because you're you know, in massage school as well as being a personal mm -hmm. trainer. So if you're right hand dominant, it's so easy to decompress that arm as you're pushing into people. Mm -hmm. So if you just started to have this problem yeah. with massage school, that could be the reason. So uh, if you're asymmetrical like this, you can't uh, basically give a corrective that is symmetrical. So for her, when you're doing heavy carries, what you might have to do, weirdly enough, is allow yourself a little bit of a hike and a little bit of a push up. Maybe do this corrective right before you do a heavy carry to retrain that. And if you're spending time overhead, then you want to make sure that you've released subclavius first, yes? So that upper trap has a chance to actually do its job, okay? So don't think that everyone needs to have their traps stretched out because Beth will tell you. No amount of stretching will ever help. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring stretch to a decompression problem. You have an AC joint that's decompressed. The upper trap is inhibited and on stretch. So if you stretch something that's tight just because it hurts, you might actually perpetuate the problem and increase the numbness. We care a heck of a lot more about numbness of the hand than we do about the awareness that you have here. Although I think that the awareness that you have here will decrease if we teach it how to actually shorten. Mm -hmm. Weird, right? right? I know. Uh, thank you, Beth, so much. Thank you. Yes, yes. And thank you, NKT community, for allowing for this opportunity. And I'm Dr. Kathy Dooley. I'll see you next time.